Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Mazzoni. Um, I work at KEXP, and I'm here with two uh, dear friends, uh, Richard Dorfmeister and Peter Kruder. You might know them as K&D, Kruder and Dorfmeister. Uh, they created an incredible buzz and stir um, in the early to mid-90s and continued to be um, producing music, producing records, um, but that influence that they had at that particular time, everybody fell in love with KND, literally all over the world. It was, it was wonderful. The music was, uh, was haunting. Um, it was really well produced and uh, it really carried a lot of weight with many. It's often, still now, um, it's in the mix for many, many people uh, all over the world. And they have a new record coming out this month, aptly titled 1995. Richard Peter, hi. Hey. hey, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, there's a lot I want to talk about. Um, first off is how are you guys surviving this uh, this interesting time that we're in? We are uh, hanging out in Vienna and uh, uh, Zurich, uh, respectively, and uh, we're doing good. We're in the studio, we're working, uh, trying to make something of that uh, weird time. Okay, what's the what what is the inspiration that is manifesting uh, through that? Because you've been working on this record for a bit, and then the world kind of went a little kooky. So I'm I'm always curious. It's like so, you know, were there moments when you're like, hey, this thing is coming out. Um, what what what's up with that? Well, we just somehow, of course, we're heavily affected by the whole situation because of the cancellation of all our planned shows mm -hmm. for these years. We were supposed to play in America, uh, making a whole tour um, and playing even Coachella, what, what was supposed to be a great thing to do for us. And yeah. the whole thing went down and then we um, had to somehow readjust the set in a way. The release itself uh, was already planned last year. So it just came together that we have more time now to focus on all the activities around the release, which is a good thing for us. And it's a good thing to meet up as well and to and to live in our creative cosmos and get out of the daily bad news thing that really just put you down and, and, and yeah. not really an inspiration. So it's great to have that. And, and uh, somehow it feels like if there would be not really a, a bad situation if we are together, mm. but once we are separated again <clears throat> or go away, it's then you face the reality and that's not so funny at the moment, really. It's been 25 years since that first record. So, you know, you've evolved, you know, you guys aren't like, you know, like a, like a classic uh, party rock band that like, you know, these guys in their 50s are still playing the same song. Hey girl, I'm gonna get you girl. It's like, what are you talking about? Um, what was some of the the the, um, the mindset and intention in creating this record? The record is basically material from the period between '93 and '95. So what we call the pure period now, uh, because it's it was the time where we didn't do anything except for making music 24/7 and uh, uh, sometimes smoking joints in between. But otherwise, we just were focusing on that. And it was the time where we had no responsibility other than that. And this was uh, an amazing moment where we just, uh, we were collecting records, we were going in the studio, we were meeting up, we were sharing uh, music, we were sharing tracks. Uh, and uh, it was a uh, yeah, magical time in a way and somehow, the records, uh, for, even, also for us, uh, transpose that feeling uh, very well into that time now. It's pure as it is. We we found the material. Well, first we, we listened to the test pressing we did at the time for DJ use of the tracks. Mm -hmm. and then we decided to to do uh, a research on the DAT tapes, on the di digital tapes. And uh, it took a while to find the right versions. Peter was. Uh, spending hours of of just finding the right versions, and then we had the problem with the with the quality of the dots that got sorted, and then um, I had the idea, okay, let's let's because we found already the as well the the data backups of the archives and and the Ataris, and it's okay, it says okay, let's put the audio because the Atari and all setup is not working anymore, really fine. 
So let's put the whole data into the hard disk and try to recreate the thing. And I tried that on two, three tracks and I quickly found out that it's just not possible to recreate a thing. And and once, and it, it would spend weeks of recreating and at the end it would just sound as it is already. So that doesn't make sense. And somehow uh, then we decided to not to add a bass drum, a modern bass drum or a, a, a cool sort of bass synthesizer to make it more f funky or more modern. We said, mm -hmm. let's keep the original vibe as it is to keep this magic of the early years and comp just select them, pol polish them a bit, master them and um, bring them out as, um, as the 1995 a uh, title okay. to be as, as a benchmark of of the time before as a once 95 happened it was a, it changed it all for us because then we started to DJ and got this track even more and more distracted in a way and and this this spirit of 24 7 home studio uh lounging and producing uh freaking uh went away Okay. Okay. So interesting. So this is the, so. So it was almost like an um, archaeological. Um, mm. uh, In a way, it was <laughs> because it, it was interesting. Because uh, the thing is, we, once we started looking for the the old dead tapes, uh, we had you know they're 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 all over the place. You know, so I, there's some boxes in my in, in my home. There's some boxes in his place. Uh, some boxes uh, a friend of mine had because I I had them. Did, uh, Record it onto for so I can use them like years ago. So you know, so we had to find all those things, and then compare it and listening and and finding you know, for the drop parts you had to find an equal part somewhere else. But back then we we mixed everything live, you know. So uh, it was um, yeah, it was yeah. quite and, some work. And uh, due to technical reasons, we never did. As you normally do in a, in a proper studio, what you do is you put them on a 24 track. You you you, you track the the, mm. the tracks on a 24 Otari or whatever. And since and we didn't do that, we never tracked um, because we we didn't have a 24 track anyway. And what we would would could have done is to put all the sing, single tracks on on that. Yeah. yeah, but but then then once we had the extensions of the Mackie, then suddenly we were running 48 tracks, mm -hmm. and just to record the single tracks would have taken 24 times six seven minutes. Another 25 years, so another, another 25 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's the reason why we don't have any real yeah. single backups of of the mixes as well of the all the K and D mixes from the sessions. They're not existing. They're all like live recordings. Mm. What was that like for you to go back to that time? Because it's been, you know, we've all kind of grown up and uh, our lives have become more complicated. And that time was when you and I first met. I have a picture of that time from our session. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Remember yeah. this particular moment? With Raphael. Yeah, from the UFO. Nice, yeah. It was easy. It was free. It was like, you know, as you said, you guys would just started DJing. And that's surprising that DJing became a um, kind of like a, a distraction for you. Um, but I guess it did because you guys got really popular and then you got in demand. DJ culture was around for a while, but it kind of like started to really bubble up. Um, and you can't be in a studio getting high and making mixes and experimenting, you know, and just and doing that all the time. So I'm always curious 
Uh, what was it like for you to go back into that? Like, what, what were you, what was your mindset? Did you discover some things about yourself? Like, you know, it's always interesting when you open up an old book or an open up old box. It's like, whoa, look at all this stuff here. Uh, what was that? What was that like for you guys? It was, uh, when we did the session, it was surprisingly, um, uh, it felt surprisingly good. You know, it was just, you, the thing is, when you do a song like us, you hear the song about, a million times, you know, when you work on it. So you have a very fond memory of every single note that is in that song. So when we listened to it, it was just uh, like being back in the old G-Stone Studio One in the in my in my street, you know, and then seeing my red couch and and hearing that music uh, coming out of the speakers, and it literally felt a little bit like that. And what was great was that. Um, somehow we felt very comfortable with what came out of the speakers and it felt like this would be great to have people here now because i think uh, we talked about it a lot i think like five years ago we wouldn't have done something like that you know we okay. probably wouldn't have released we wouldn't have we would have heard it and said mm, it's, well, it's nice but it doesn't fit and uh, due to some obscure reasons last year in september it felt like uh, uh, the frequency is right, you know, uh, it felt like it's... And, and uh, it, it's a good story. It's a good story. It's not just an album, it's not just a compilation of, of eight, nine tracks you did over the last time with, with no uh, cons content. It, it, it really tells a story. It's great. It actually, I mean, remember we got asked more than a million times when is your album coming out? And at the end it was just, it turned out to be just a, a, something we would laugh about. And and uh, now talking about it, we really discover why we never really did it because we were, were not really aware of that at the time. Mm -hmm. Just things happened so quickly. Every week there was something new, you know, the ball was really rolling. And um, uh, and then then it was not on the topic. It was not. Uh, we just didn't do it. And, okay. and now and now suddenly it's, it's just great to find out how good it was actually <laughs> somehow for mm. us i mean it's not pop it's not it's not really pop in that sense oh. yeah. and it, it's not it's just good listening music as peter said you can listen to it in the background or you can focus on it and and find details that you might like so it it, it has two purposes in a way for a long time i thought like okay, these guys are like some kind of like studio wizards because they're not going to go for the second record so it's not it's not the easy hanging fruit and you must have been offers up the yin yang where's the next crude and dorfmeister record coming out and then you know peace orchestra came tosca other projects film projects you know remixes all of that stuff but that never came up and we all kind of were like okay it's just not going to happen and then you know uh, we continue to stay friends and stay in touch and so it's like whatever and then suddenly hey we're going to do this thing and I was like, wow, that's interesting, okay. But your lives have changed pretty dramatically, like, you know, whether personally or professionally, you also received, um, you know, the, the, your, your country of your, your home is suddenly like throwing uh, medals and laurels upon you. So suddenly this duo that's, you know, in the pure time on a red couch in G-Stone Studios is being asked by the mayor to, or the governor, the whole come, and we, we, we will celebrate this music you created um, in your little studio there. That's an interesting thing to go through uh, from pure state to now. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like, what was that like? It was, that, that was a, that the whole thing was a, and, and this, the whole thing about the medal was, a, it's a medal of honor for, for what you did for uh, Vienna and, and all this. And uh, we got this uh, awarded in 2003, okay? Uh, but we didn't pick it up back then. <laughs> yeah, and we uh, forgot, forgot to pick it up. And we forgot to, <laughs> actually, we got this letter and we forgot to pick it up. And uh, they did a, a, a documentary about us in 2016. They started it or something like that. And um, the, one of the guys came to me and asked if I have maybe some old pictures, some photographs from, from the early 90s when we started. It would be great to put this in, in between the, the the, the, the stuff they shot and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was looking for, through some boxes and all of a sudden I found that that envelope with the with the, the flag of Vienna stamped on it. 
you know, and mm-hmm. I, I was kind of like uh, thinking, uh, what the hell is that? And I opened it and it said, uh, dear Mr. Kruder, uh, we would like to award you with the Golden Medal of Honor for your uh, achievements. Uh, and uh, we would love to give it to you. Uh, we need your reply if you are willing to take it. Uh, and I, I, I saw I saw this thing and I laughed about it and I looked at the date and it's 2003 and it's really funny. And in the <laughs> evening, in the evening, I I met my assistant and I told her the story and she said, oh, come on, give me that thing. I called him if you still if they still want to give it to you. And I said, okay, let's do that. If, if it's not run out. If, if it's not, you know, if, it not, if it didn't give we it get, to somebody it else. To, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and so, so, she, so, so she, the next day she called and, uh, and the response from the secretary there was, uh, ah, that is very nice that Mr. Kruder t- calls after more than 14 years <laughs> for picking this thing up. We still have it. We still have everything, and we also awarded this to Mr. Dorfmeister. Would he be willing to take it? <laughs> so Andrea, my assistant, then called Richard and and asked Richard if he wants to take it. And Richard said, "Yeah, yeah, cool." And then uh, we both, uh, yeah, met in Vienna, and we had this big celebration in the in the, in the what you call it, uh, Rathaus, uh, in the, in the uh, townhouse, townhouse, in the townhouse. Uh, with all our friends and and it was it was a brilliant yeah. uh, it was it was great because um, um, we were not sure about our how 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 much the people know us after all that years yeah and so um, I did a, a little flyer myself just a simple one with the announcing the party after party of the townhouse action and um, f- uh, placed it on Facebook and we got a a response of I don't know. Hundred thousands, whatever super response, because we never did any advertisement before. We just didn't use it for years, yeah. and that's where you reach all the people. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no restrictions on, on Facebook because yeah, yeah, it was the first and only time that we reached uh, all the people on, Facebook, on so our, our, our friends on Facebook. Yeah. Our channel was dead for five years yes. or six years, and then this came and, <laughs> and literally reached everybody. everybody. <laughs> Wow. And, and yeah. people have and then out. afterwards it all went lower because yeah. you know how the algorithm works. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, it spreads. Um, you guys in that way are kind of like that old sci-fi movie where you're like been like frozen. Yeah. For yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then you come out like what what is that? Yeah. No. Yeah. And we still look the same. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, you you age you age well. Whatever you guys are, whatever you continue to do that, you yeah. know. I, I've seen worse. Yeah. As have you. <laughs> <laughs> but but let's talk about that for a second because so much has changed. Like when when you first started making music, there was no streaming, there was no downloads. Like even in a context of, you know, if you're going to throw a club night in your own, you had to go out there and put flyers. My favorite story is, is the one in London when we, when we went to London and, and, and we, we just we went to the phone boxes, you know, the, the, the phone booths, old yeah. booths, yeah. the red ones in London mm-hmm. and just called Ninja Tune guy, mm-hmm. Peter from Ninja. Mm-hmm. Hi, this is, this is yeah. K&D and K, we, we're coming along now, okay. And then it just went there yeah. with the record. Say hello, this is our record. A cool, and it worked. And, t- yeah. t- and talking t- tech, it was great because I remember we were playing in, in London and on the airport back to Vienna, to Vienna, or was it on the way? I don't remember. We we saw LTG Bookham. Yeah, Bookham mm. was big time at the was yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point. It was huge, and we started to play drum and bass as well. And he he was great. And and he and uh, Dynamite. Mm-hmm. It was always with the MC Dynamite, and he had. Uh, he had already a mobile phone. A mobile phone. It was a big like this. It was, it actually, it was this. It was the Panasonic, uh, if you remember, the thick one. Yeah, the first, yeah, yeah. It was. It was the hypest thing to have, and we were like, mm, "That looks good." <laughs> yeah. And then, and the crazy thing is, we, we bought then, right? We came back to Vienna. We bought a phone, and both of us had it a year just lying in a in a cupboard somewhere. We never <laughs> we used really it. Used it. <laughs> What do I need this for? It's like, it's gonna, it's it's gonna so ruin the streamline. Yeah. Now, because Peter said, um, I have to just say it again, because actually through you and other guys, we were actually really, we saw it all coming up, mm-hmm. you know, with the net and the thing with Apple and the whole tech tech companies. And, and we just, we just 
saw it. <laughs> we didn't do nada. I, yeah. No, no, but the <laughs> thing, the thing was also like um, on that on that very first tour, we 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 were we were based in San Francisco, mm. and we did uh, we played uh, in Seattle, we played San Francisco, we yeah, played LA. LA, 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 and and in San Diego, and San Diego as well, yeah. A funny story there as well, but uh, uh, but that was the San Francisco before the boom. You remember, you know, yeah. it was the, it was the you know so it, it's the whole the whole city was kind of very relaxed and 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 apartments were cheap and and I really liked it there. And then a few years later, like in '98 or when we did the next big tours, everything changed. Everything was different. San Francisco was not the same mm. anymore, and 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 the and houses the, went up, and yeah, and, and, and people on the street. And, and but I just I, I still remember this time. Yeah. It was it was like a dream for me. San Francisco mm. was like yeah. wow, was amazing. like hippie. Yeah. And, and, and then we. I mean, last time we went to San Francisco, remember the last mm. tour? It was awful. The inner city is is so ex they're all gone. It's just yeah. it's, it's yeah. just uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's just, just too expensive. Uh, all the people are gone. Yeah. Talking about age, that's that's something that we that you normally do in our uh, position. <laughs> <laughs> at, at no, our we, age. At our age. Now and we you just, are lucky to. Yeah. yeah. Now, now we just had to have to, had to think practically because we had we had these shows. Yeah. At first, we started to do DJ improvised sessions, and then quickly we turned uh, changed over to a, a fully team up teamed up live show um, with visuals and and rehearsals and lighting guy and and like a whole like a concert and um, and that that. Um, um, we, and then we thought, hey, our, our age group, our customers, our fans, they might not even want to stay up until three in the morning or five. So let's, and then Peter said, hey, why don't we put this club idea as a concert at nine o'clock in the evening? So people can perhaps go for dinner before or whatever, and afterwards they can go out if they want to, not that late. But yeah. it's bit, it have a three hour show from nine to 12. And that worked out brilliantly that was just top because if you would have started at 11 as a dance late night show you would we would have lost the concentration as mm. well of the people because it's too late but between 9 and 11 it's it's top yeah it, not true uh, it's, it's an interesting thing because we are like a, we are a generation uh, or probably the first generation that literally grew up in clubs you know uh, and and as you get older, the club thing is not interesting for you anymore because you have like three kids at home. You have to get up at seven in the morning. So uh, everything past one o'clock midnight is not uh, if of Possible. any importance for you anymore. And yeah. it's very interesting because we kind of lost our whole crowd due to that because we still existed in clubs and were working only in clubs. And all of our friends are like, when you when you start to play one o'clock, no, I'm sleeping. Then my friends, <laughs> sorry. So it's it's it, so we lost a, basically our whole audience. And it's very interesting to, for instance, my mom, she's eighty. You know, she grew up in a concert hall. You know, yeah. and she still goes to concerts all the time. So for her, the, her music life or her music thing never ever changed. You know, and still she still goes to the same people if they're still alive. Uh, that she went to when she was young, you know. So, oh. and, and for us, it was good to bring that thing back into, uh, bring the club into a situation where people our age can enjoy it as well, and 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 dance their ass off for three hours and and go home with a big smile. I want to talk a little bit about records because you guys started in records and as an interesting story I remember I think Peter was telling me maybe Richard where you guys used to carry records around and then you saw a DJ and that DJ just had I think it was like an early version of Serato in his laptop he had no records and you were like where the hell are your records you're a DJ where are your records and then we've gone through um, of course CDs 
downloads, now streaming, records are back. And, um, and I know that both of you have significant record collections, but what are your thoughts on uh, why records seem to have such longevity? And this is the first year that records outsold CDs. Um, but, but uh, which doesn't mean anything, but what are your thoughts on that from a, con from a conceptual perspective? I've, I mean, there's, there's several aspects and we talked about it already. I mean, I have just I just have to mention the the thing with the carrying records. I mean, I remember uh, one one uh, situation where we arrived at the airport, and we still there was the, the early times before we had the metal cases, and we arrived <laughs> at the you know you remember the one the black ones yeah. were oh, just yeah. paper, paper paper somehow thick paper, and then we arrived and and my records arrived every single record was on the. On the, <laughs> on the on the on the uh, the belt on, on, on the, the belt, belt. Yeah. coming up and while we see everyone was every looking at the record. record and we were we were like oh my <laughs> okay. god and then we thought mm, it might be time to change yeah. over to metal yeah. uh, metal cases so we uh, we were carrying records around like mad and it was it was really, we loved it it was great we were limited to some things but we loved it to uh, pick up on your question uh, it's I think what what is really missing in in music and not being able to buy music as we all did, is the, I know of every single record I bought in my teens. Yes. I know exactly yes. where I bought it, when I bought it, uh, how much I had to suffer to get the money together. And and all those things are, mm. are like, an, oh, and I still also like from touring, you know, we were everywhere. I know where I found this record or that record and, and, and where I heard it first. Who, who who's who told us about it or uh, all those stories you know and then the final the final uh, trophy is the actual record you know uh, or, or we heard something that somebody played on the radio and then you yeah, dug yeah, forever yeah. to find that record yeah, somewhere yeah. in the world and then you find it in in Tokyo in in a store somewhere hidden in in Shibuya in a small street in you know and and this is this is what also, like I think this is what developed music a little bit because people just don't, you don't have that experience with uh, um, uh, downloading a file or listening to it on Spotify. You, know? you guys are successful. You've uh, continued to be in music. You didn't go like, ah, I did that. I'm going to go be a lawyer or a plumber or an accountant or something right now. You continue to be in this space. You're working in film, Tosca, Peace Orchestra, remixes, other projects, um, but. So at the same time, you've, you've been in the space dealing with Spotify, dealing with streaming, dealing with downloads, dealing with Napster and the whole, the whole shebang. Now you're finally releasing something as uh, K&D, which is the name that first brought you um, this, um, uh, you know, fame, the metal. Um, what, what are you thinking about in this context right now? Because there's like, there's the stuff you've done already and it's out there, you put it on Spotify, you know, people are listening to it. This is new. How are you uh, working that right now? Because you're not going out to DJ, and it's not like you know you're expecting to sell a million copies because copies aren't being bought. How are you guys? What, what are you thinking about that? And I'm, I'm thinking of like you know learnings and what what has come up. Well, what you definitely? I mean, we definitely trying to set up our our network again as we did in the beginning mm -hmm. somehow. Um, what we do is um, setting up a proper merch uh, site, which we never had ever, mm -hmm. never had a real merch thing running. And now we, in collaboration with uh, some some guys here in Vienna, we did um, some graphic, some designs for T-shirts and other textiles, and um, other like we did art prints of of, uh, of something special, and um, just getting this sort of stuff together. Yeah, finally, <laughs> and um, at the same time thinking about um, virtual shows. I mean, it's a big topic, and somehow it's a bit queer. It's, it's strange because, as we said before, it's all based on physical contact. And and yeah. I mean, I mean, how do you want to, to to get to know somebody? I mean, perhaps you can get to know somebody over the over over the net, like like talking to somebody like here. Yeah. I don't know. Perhaps it's the future as well. I mean, it all, it doesn't make really sense because the club culture always was connected to, to somehow to physical exchange and drugs as well. 
well, drugs, yeah. drugs, yeah. Same, and, alcohol, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But being, being, together. Being, being together. Yeah, being together. And, and now we, everybody talks about getting something together without being together. Um, But it, it, it's, it's an interesting thing to, to think about and, and talk about because things are just changing. You know, things are just, and we are in a state now uh, where a, an eventual uh, future has arrived earlier. Than, mm -hmm. uh, than supposed to be, you know, you know, like this this whole pandemic brought us into a place where we have to think about how can we how, how can we continue the, the joyous situation of having a concert and and having ha yeah. being together and 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 sharing things, uh, even though it's this is not physically possible and it's it's a very good uh, uh, um, thing to think about because somehow I think it's very needed in a way uh, as well as uh, as extending what is a concert you know it's 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 you know it, it's because I, I thought it's it, the first things that popped up on in on, on the uh, in the in the internet world of the first concerts I was sitting and watched them and I thought Why are you showing a stage where no, nobody can be in front and and no audience can be there? How, yeah, no, it's why, true. Why it's, why why don't you go and think about it from a different perspective? I'm now, I can now create a world. And and for instance, I really like the Billie Eilish concert because she's kind of like the first uh, who kind of explored that whole idea what you could do, where you could sing, and where you what background you could have and what you and uh, and I think this is a this is a very interesting and a very challenging uh, thing to approach yeah and at the end it's super comfortable if you think about it like old old guys like us yeah, it's um, amazing you just don't have to leave your room <laughs> wow <laughs> I, just, I get to I like, just go to the concert no, and, 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 and my and, bathroom is right my there <laughs> I don't yeah. have to wait in line yeah. to, no, and, 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 and the thing is I want to drink we are, we are you know remember the old Kraftwerk idea where they wanted to send the robots to to, to tour and, yeah, and yeah, they're yeah. Not, not even coming we do it virtually we let we let us you know we let us uh, draw somebody and us just but looking young and very good you know and so and you, you look even, fine you look fine you don't even have <laughs> to be there and and it looks really real and i mean cgi pff, come on that's our shit <laughs> no i know i know and and, 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 and we be beautiful forever and ever yeah, and ever, ever you know and 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 in there are, 2000, there are movies about that 85 we release uh, the album we're just doing now <laughs> 2020 it's all fake it's all fake, it's all fake. <laughs> no it's it, i mean It, 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 I'm sure it, it, there's, there will be a time, yep. maybe in 30 years or 50 years, where the word fake doesn't exist anymore because everything is fake. Yeah. Ev literally everything will be fake. It, there okay, will be okay. no reality. Thank you for, for sharing your thoughts and this concept and, and, um, and putting it out. But I, I want, I'm curious, super, super curious, like how you're going to continue to do this, how this stuff is coming out, because it doesn't feel like, you know, this Tosca, this Peace Orchestra, are, is this, like, even before closing right now, what about the other projects? Like, how are they in your, in your space? I mean, bef before the last 20 years or 15 years before, it, it was never really talked about. So, so, so it was just, okay, the Peace Orchestra is coming out, Tosca, a thing is coming out. It just happened. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And now we're on that point where we say, okay, Well, let's talk about it and let's let's put that thing on a on a on a map let's say okay what is the best time for a peace orchestra album now what would be the best timing in in relation to the KD project for the Tosca release mm -hmm. so now it, it, it makes much more sense mm -hmm. it's much more target orientated yeah. now and, and I'm happy about that because that, that makes everything much easier you know in a way. And, and since we set up G-Stone again, so we had a relaunch of the label, yeah. yeah. And 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 this is this was a thing where we talked. So uh, eventually, in the beginning, it was the idea just to do the K and D mm -hmm. stuff on it. And now we also said, okay, let's do the Peace Orchestra on it and and see how this works. And, and uh, but at the same time, developing the K and D stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we so, focus we, we we try to focus on 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 that operation a hundred percent and then 
if we find s a small spots in between, we do the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Massive success. Okay. Thank you. So Be good well. talking to you. Good talking to you too.